everybody, I'm Frank Lieber, and welcome to Madison Square Garden's Felt Forum for a truly historic event in women's sports, the first World Women's Judo Championship. 27 nations on hand competing in eight different weight classifications, and working with me is Rusty Katakogi herself, a former coach of the U.S. women's team and an organizer of this event, and I know this is a proud and happy moment for you. It certainly is, and we're very delighted to have you here cover our event and it's a history being made the beginning of the advanced movement towards the olympics for women's judo Hello? Hello to our judo family joining us from around the world for what promises to be an exciting online session. My name is Lisa Allen and I am the head of the IGF Gender Equity Commission. I will start by outlining the format of today's session. But before I begin, I would like to say that we have French, Spanish and Italian translation for those that need it, and you should log in with the Zoom login for the translation. For English, no need to log in. You can just watch the live YouTube stream. And a huge thank you to our translators today, Marine, Carmen and Monia. These ladies are volunteers and not professional translators, and we want to thank them for giving up their time to help us. I also want to say an enormous thank you to the people who have worked so hard on their part to realize this project. Elisabetta, Nico, Pedro, Matthias, Mari, Christiana, and the media team at the IGF, and to Keith, Devon, and Cecil from USA Judo, and to Mr. Kanakogi, Jean, and Carrie from Project Rusty. We will start today with a welcome from the IGF and the Kanakogi family. We will follow up with the participants telling us about themselves and then we will have a fun question and answer session. It will be relaxed and informal, so sit back, relax and enjoy. We now start with a welcome from the President of the International Judo Federation, Mr Marius Wieser. Dear Judo family, on the occasion of the 40th anniversary of the first Women World Championship that took place in New York in 1980, I would like to congratulate and express my gratitude to the women in our Judo family, as well as those who have contributed to promoting, encouraging, and sharing our passion for Judo and its values. Today, we take a moment to celebrate this meaningful and inspiring event for judo, sport, and society. Today, judo is celebrated as a model of equality and equity between men and women. I'm proud to say that next year, the participation code at the Tokyo Olympic Games will be exactly 50 for men and 50 for women. But the road here has not been easy. And this World Championship paved the way for many generations of inspiring athletes to come. I thank all of you for your boundless dedication, hard work, and enthusiasm. Happy anniversary. Thank you very much, Mr. Wieser. 
And now we will have the welcome from the Kanokogi family, without whom the first Women's World Judo Championships would not have taken place. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Jean Kanokogi. Thank you, Lisa. Hello, everybody, and good evening, good morning, good afternoon around the world. Uh, like Lisa said, I'm Jean Kanakogi, and I grew up in the shadows of Rusty. I was her daughter and her student in life and in judo, and, and she gave me the tools to fight for equality and the foresight to lead and open doors for others, as she did in 1980. And I want to thank the Gender Equity Commission and the IJF USA Judo for getting the world together during this difficult time. Uh, this journey embraces the triumphs of the past, but also celebrates the progress of the future. Uh, what started this all, and just in brief, was one ticked off woman named Rusty Kanakogi. In 1959, she disguised herself as a man because there was no women's judo so that she can compete. And she won. She beat a man fair and square and won a gold medal. But they took her gold medal from her just because she was a woman. That ticked her off beyond belief. And any of you that know Rusty knows that when Rusty is on a mission to do something, she will do it. Well, she decided that no woman ever will suffer such an indignity ever again, and women's judo needs to be an Olympic sport. So that was the pivotal moment. There were a lot of naysayers, and she shattered these glass ceilings. I mean, she was a bull in a china shop when it came to equality and fighting for justice. So uh, years later, Rusty wanted to hold the first Women's World Judo Championships because she found out that it was necessary to have this in order to even be considered to be an Olympic sport. So uh, they said, okay, uh, you, you wanna have a world championships, uh, go, go ahead. After fighting and fighting all of, the, all of the no's, she finally got a yes. And she said, you know what? I'm gonna have it at Madison Square Garden. So with $146 in the bank account, she said she's going to host it in Madison Square Garden. And you know what? A woman who was a visionary and on a mission had it at Madison Square Garden the biggest experience, New York City, the hotel right across the street. And she even had it Thanksgiving Day weekend where of course Thanksgiving's in the United States. So she convinced everybody that that gigantic parade with all of the balloons were just for them for the first Women's World Championships. Uh, I just finished, matter of fact, today we just got the book in, in stock, uh, Get Up and Fight, which was her memoir that I promised I would get out and, and get published. And it's different because she's actually telling the story in her voice, in her words. That was super important. I'll, I'll hold it up and share that with you. That was super important. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Well, there's Rusty's face at least because she wanted the history to be accurate or as accurate as she can recall what happened to her and her experiences so that this doesn't Jean, we've lost your sound. Oh, how about now? Where did you lose me? At That's what it, point? About two sentences ago. Oh, okay. So uh, I was just telling everybody, if you come to Brooklyn, uh, come visit Rusty Kanakogi Way in Coney Island, grab a hot dog at Nathan's. There is a street in Brooklyn co-named after Rusty. And uh, also one of the things that she wanted to, that she mentions in, in her memoir is everybody who participated in the 1980 World Championships, officials, competitors, you're all pioneers because you paved the way for the future and you opened the doors for all of the competitors and judoka behind you. So with a heartfelt thank you for having this event, I'd like to introduce a message to my, from my dad. Hi, uh, my name is Ryohei Kanakogi and my wife is a Rusty Kanokogi. And uh, I want to say the congratulation, the 40 years anniversary to the first World Women Judo Championship. The 40 years, it's uh, like, uh, sound like a long time ago, but the time is, uh, uh, I feeling like uh, yesterday. So uh, anyway, this program, IGF doing is really I appreciate it. And also the prayer that I remember. 
like uh, yesterday, the, the, the prayers, as I remember, the, like in 20, so that means uh, around uh, like almost 40, no, not 40, just 60 years, 60 years old. It's a believe or not. So anyway, congratulations <laughs> and uh, good luck for the all. Thank you, Mr. Kanakogi and to Jean. So now everyone has an idea of what it took to get this event off the ground and what an amazing, determined visionary that Rusty was. More importantly, this was the start of Olympic judo being not only for men, but also for women. Rusty never quit, even when she couldn't get the International Olympic Committee to add it to the Los Angeles Olympics, she got up and fought and it was another four years of constant lobbying, promoting, fighting and writing. And finally, it was added as a demonstration in Seoul in 1988 and then included as a full sport in Barcelona in 1992, where it has remained on the Olympic programme since. Let us all remember Rusty Kanokogi and be grateful for what she did, not only for women, but also for judo. As you know, tomorrow it will be 40 years since the first World Championships for Women was held in New York in Madison Square Gardens. And the aim of this project was to commemorate both the pioneering women who participated in the competition and all of the other people involved, the coaches, the team officials, the local organizers, the volunteers and the referees to remember those athletes and judo family members who are no longer with us and to examine how much women's performance judo has progressed in the intervening 40 years and to see where the future will go for women in the sport. Many beautiful and touching articles have been published on the IJF website thanks to Nico and the IJF media team and Elisabetta has lovingly collected cropped and uploaded more than 300 images to the online gallery of the event, including the hand-drawn venue plan, which looks exactly like the ones we use today for the World Judo Tour, except now ours is digital. So the idea for this project actually started when the Italian women were celebrating a 70th birthday of a very special woman. And I would like now to ask the world champion, Margarita De Cal, to take to the floor and start by telling us a few things about herself. Margarita, can you unmute and start your speech? Margarita? Well, in the moment, I'm here. Uh, it's uh, difficult to begin this big program, but uh, I try with my with the English uh, to say something about uh, my emotion. The first emotion, it was uh, to arrive in New York. I live in Venice, uh, so there are a few city town uh, so beautiful as my town. But uh, the first time I arrived in New York, I saw a completely different uh, town. It was uh, full of light, full of people, a uh, lot of building, mm, so different. But uh, I think that the more mm, uh, emotional things is uh, to arrive in uh, Madison Square Garden. When I leave uh, Italy, mm, I decide uh, not uh, to think uh, what I can do in the World Championship. They say to me, mm, a medal, you can take a medal, you can take a medal. Okay, for me, it was only a competition. And um, I say, okay, I try, I live this new experience and, uh, and I arrive. Um, in that period, uh, I was already teaching in the school. Uh, I began eight years uh, before to teach physical education in the school. 
and I have no more time to, to play judo. I play three times a week for two hours, no more. <laughs> and after I have to work. And uh, it was a uh, few time to prepare a so important competition, but I try. Uh, you ask me uh, what changed in my life after World Championship. Few things, because uh, I, I already work, I already live by myself. So my life, my normal life, uh, it was uh, ready. I was happy. I was a woman. I, I was uh, 30 years old. Um, I think I was the oldest girl. Me and Paulette Fouillet was the oldest uh, girl. Good, madam. <laughs> and uh, no, nothing uh, particular for um, Italian person it was only yes you won something uh, uh, but it was not so important uh, as it was important uh, for uh, judo woman, ju woman judo because uh, rusty do uh, wonderful things uh, she opened the door for the woman uh, to the international competition and uh, she she was a wonderful woman i saw her in venice they come at my home and they stay with me and my family for a few days but it was a wonderful days now i want to finish to to tell you my story, and I say that uh, I I retired to to work. Now I'm an old lady with uh, some physical problem, so I finish uh, to play judo, but uh, I never finished to love judo. Now I'm uh, a dirigent, a youth, a manager in my dojo. Uh, and I hope to live with a, a judo family for all my life. That's all. I close. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, grazie mille, Margherita. Thank you very much. Sorry for my English, but it's a long time I don't speak English. Your English is perfect. Don't worry. Everybody really appreciated you sharing that with us. Um, thank you again. Uh, I would like to ask Jane now if she will give us a couple of minutes on her, um, what she's been doing in the last 40 years. Jane Bridge, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, hello. Thank you, Lisa. Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Um, so um, I would like to say, first of all, you know, I was just a competitor. I wasn't aware, and I'm sure most of us weren't aware of all the work that Rusty Kanakogi had done, you know, to finally get these world championships up and running. So, um, Jean and Mr. Kanakogi, thank you so much uh, for all the hard work that you, you, you surely participated in. And um, yes, you, you're right, Mr. Kanukogi. I was 20 at the time, so now I'm 60 years old <laughs> and uh, time flies. Um, well, um, so I became world champion uh, um, on that day in Madison Square Garden. So it really did change my life because um, I was lucky enough to be able to stay in judo. Uh, I'm still involved a lot in judo. I'm a vice president of, um, within the European Judo Union. Uh, I've been a coach, a national coach with the British team. And um, I was um, living in France for 30 years. I was teaching judo for 30 years. So it really uh, shaped my life. And um, I think without this title, my life would have been completely different. So, um, well, my story for Madison Square Garden, my, my father was a big fan of Frank Sinatra. So um, I was hoping that I would bump into him somehow 
in New York in, in Madison Square Garden or somewhere, you know, I mean, um, that was a big thing for me at that time. My dad just loved Frank Sinatra. So unfortunately, I didn't see him. Um, but uh, I had a great time. And uh, so uh, thank you so much for that. And um, yeah, I think, um, yeah, that's, I think that's enough, Lisa. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jane, and we look forward to hearing more from you during the question and answering. Now I'd like to cross the world and I'd like to go to Venezuela and I would like to ask Jomara to talk to us for a couple of minutes about her life. So if you can unmute Jomara and then we will hear from you. Thank you. No, I am here, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, uh, I can explain to you that uh, the years that follow my youth life, I became a civil engineer and have a master's degree in structural design. Simultaneously, I work as professor in the inner faculty of United, the Rafael Udaneta University and all the program of master in Sudan University. When I, be in, when I came to the first national judo championship, I was very uh, unexpected that what can happen and over there. And the most thing I remember is that I was in the famous Madison Square Garden and for me, me, all the persons that have been there, they have to be famous. I don't think never in the life that I will be over there in a national in a world judo championship. And it was very amazing to me be there. Thank you very much, Ziomara. It's lovely to hear from you. And we like to see your, your Christmas tree behind you. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. So next, I would... Yes. <laughs> okay, it's for you all. Happy. <laughs> Happy. Thank you very much. So we'll, we'll go back to Europe now and we'll ask Edith to share with us a couple of things about what she's been doing. Technical thing. Monia, can you check your micro? Okay, hello, can you hear me now? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, can hear you. <laughs> okay. this is Edith Simon. I'm, I'm from, I'm uh, uh, called from Vienna, from Austria. And I'm very happy, I'm very excited that we, we, we can join after so many years. And um, yeah, uh, for 40 years ago, the first world championship uh, I, I was about as excited <laughs> as today. I was just a teenager and, and uh, I had not uh, won any European, European championship medals before, so hardly anybody knew me. And I think I surprised, <laughs> surprised the others and, and actually won. And, um, but unfortunately I had to stop with judo after a very severe injury. 1982, after the European Championships, I tore both my cruciate ligaments in the left knee and um, I was operated on several times, uh, two surgeries I had in, the, in America, in Birmingham, Alabama. And I stayed in America for seven years and uh, got a chance to have a, a, a little job in a biomechanical lab and and then started medical school, but got very homesick and uh, finished medical school at home in Vienna and worked in a histological laboratory for many years. But now I'm retired and uh, yeah, many years I did not uh, follow up on, on Judo, but now I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. I have a chance to, to be part of this family and, and be, be with you all. And, yeah, and, and uh, I, I even uh, started some judo training. We have a 
veterans children training here 50 plus and i actually uh, started uh, every once in a while to, to to go there and 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 we had a lot of fun and it's still judo is more, much more fun to me than all the other sports which i do like swimming walking uh riding the bike and yeah i think <laughs> that's enough <laughs> Thank you very much, Edith. It's lovely to hear your, your story and we're really glad that you came back into judo and we're so glad that you were able to join us this evening um, mm -hmm. on, the, on the webinar. Um, so thank you, Edith. And I would like to ask Monica from Argentina to share a little bit about what she's been doing. Monica. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Monica Guadagnini, and I was a participant on the first women's um, world championship uh, for Argentina in the 61 kilograms um, category. And um, after the tournament, I kind of went on and off um, the judo scene because kind of life takes over, you know. But it really changed my life because um, one thing that I did remember about that, besides the, the, the competition and everything, and it was funny because the other day in the rehearsal, we were talking about experiences. And as an 18 year old uh, person, one of the things that called my attention was the elevator doors that are open and closed by themselves, you know, and, <laughs> and yeah. So <laughs> I said, well, I want to live in this world. I don't want to go, you know. So um, after, you know, after a while, um, you know, I was on and off the practice of, of judo that I started when I was five or six and women didn't compete. So I am a very competitive person and I wanted to compete, but so it's, it's very special to me to know the story, you know, um, now 40 years later, because I didn't have any idea when I was that young. So um, I, I think I met Rusty somehow because it, it was there, you know, in New York, but I didn't know, I didn't know this story. So this kind of ignited the, everything, you know, in me. And to make uh, the story short, well, I graduated from a bachelor's of education. So I always was involved with sports. And then I got married and in 1990, I moved to the United States. So I live in the United States right now. And I have two kids and then I, I, I was on and off the, the practice of judo and I took the whole family to, to do judo. So my two kids did judo and my son actually became like state champion here in California. And my, my husband is, a, is a, a brown belt. So now we're talking about going back to judo again. You know, my kids are out of the house and everything. So I'm not retired yet. I am working, I own a gym and I work as a gymnastic coach. Um, but my dream is to implement judo in, in my gym. So I really um, wanna thank, you know, um, Rusty and, and her family and all the women and, and, and men that made this championship uh, possible and all the men and women that made this project possible. So it's, it, it, it's just an incredible experience for me and to get to see everybody, you know, from all over the world. And so thank you very much. And, and uh, I hope to stay in touch with some people. Now we can do it through technology. So um, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much, Monica. That was a lovely, lovely summary of what you've done in the last 40 years. And we're happy to hear that your, your sons do judo and that you're maybe going to get judo back into your, your life again in your gym. Thank you, Monica. And I'd like to ask Mary from the USA if she could say a few words about what her life has been like in the last 40 years. Mary, please. Yes, hello. Can you hear me? You yes, hear me? we can. Okay. okay. Um, I competed in the 48 kilogram category. Uh, I had just turned 20 years old, uh, just about a month before the world championships happened. And I think my initial first excitement, this is gonna seem really strange, um, was that we were competing in the felt forum where so very many famous historical athletic events had taken place before. Um, and I was told, I don't know whether it was true, 
but I was told that the scale that we all weighed in on for the world championships were the same scales that had been used to weigh in people like Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier for some of those very famous boxing matches. I believe it because the scales were old enough, but I don't know if they actually were the same ones, but I thought that was really neat. Um, in terms of the long-term, um, this, this competition was something we all knew had to happen if we had any chance of ever being included in the Olympics. So anyone who was potentially young enough to compete in Olympics down the road um, had to be very excited by that, that possibility that we might actually get there. And we were having our world championships. We'd, we'd had the Pan American championships and the Pan American games and the Pacific Rim and a lot of other events had gone on, um, but we had never been recognized as having the same judo as the men. And now we were. So that part of it was very exciting for our futures. But um, um, the, the competition was tremendous. It was run well. It was a great time in New York City. Um, and after the, after the competition, um, like I said, I had just turned 20 and I'd been competing at under 48 for about five years. And it was starting to be very, very hard as I grew and matured, it was getting really difficult to make the weight. So after that competition, my coach, Jim Herbeck, and I decided that I should move up to the 52 kilogram category. And I did that and competed for a number of years at uh, 52 internationally and, and nationally. And I eventually, of course, as we all have to, I retired from competition and I still teach judo. Um, I'm teaching at a, at a small local club um, in upstate New York. And um, I have had a number of jobs uh, over the years. I've worked for my veterinarian. Uh, years ago, I've worked in a, I spent 20 years working as an aide in a nursing home. Um, I worked in a store that sold athletic equipment and did personal training. Um, I've kept up uh, doing a lot of active athletic things. Um, I have four dogs, which get walked every day. Um, and I've done a lot of hiking and backpacking. And um, I've been a member of a gym off and on. Um, I, I don't know, do anything that comes to mind. I ride my bike. I go walk a lot. Um, I ride horseback when I can. Um, and I think a lot of the reason I still at 60 years old can do all those things is because of some of the benefits that I gained from judo, uh, both the physical ones and the mental ones. So um, I think the, the world championships were a huge part of all of our lives one way and another. And um, I'm don't think we appreciated what Rusty did at the time because we were, as someone else said, we were very focused on our own competitive lives. But looking back, um, I think as a whole, um, women's judo and specifically this group of people, um, all owe Rusty a huge debt of gratitude for all the work she did to get us to that point and beyond. So that's it. Thank you very much, Mary. That was lovely to hear. And we're really glad that you're uh, keeping active and you're absolutely right. Judo is just amazing for your physical and your mental well-being. So I'd now like to ask Dawn Netherwood if she would say a few words about what she's been doing in the last 40 years. Welcome, Dawn. Hi, good evening, everybody. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Jean, Lisa and all the IGF for inviting us for doing this great event. It's a great honour for myself and for the British judo team who I was part of. Uh, the, um, the World Championships was, was uh, a great moment for us uh, because uh, it was pushing women's judo forward, uh, which we needed to make it an Olympic sport. Uh, I was part of, a, part of a, a fantastic team, the Great Britain team, who were a determined team that had a lot of fantastic results. And, uh, and in the World Championships, we made uh, really nice, good results. Um, like uh, like every, a few people said, that 
doing the World Championships in Madison Square Gardens was just fantastic for us. Like, uh, uh, that's where Muhammad Ali fought and we was going to fight in, the, in Madison Square Gardens. So it's just like, wow, oof, we're there. So we put a lot of hard work into it. We, I knew Jean before and I knew uh, Rusty before. So we, we, we sent letters to the, uh, the president of the Olympic Committee to help the Rusty get the, the rights for us to go and do the world championships, which was, I felt part of this in the beginning. Um, and then after, after the world championships, uh, well, we, I won a silver medal in uh, the 66 kilos. I lost against Edith. Sorry, Edith. <laughs> Um, but it was a fantastic atmosphere. It was just great being in the Big Apple. Um, so afterwards, uh, a lot of doors opened for me it's, uh, to do training with the Great Britain Judo team. Um, I live in France and I coach uh, international judo players. I was, I was part of the, 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 the people who helped him for the Olympic Games in London. I've trained players uh, to, for Rio, in the Olympics in Rio, and I coach actually now uh, players who prepare for international events. I have also um, a, a gym. I am a coach, uh, coach in, in uh, France. In my gym, we do high intensity training. Uh, and I think that judo for my lifetime has made me a determined woman. Uh, the judo for me is respect for everybody. You respect yourself and you respect your partner. That for me is part of judo. And judo is my life and judo will always be my life. So I'd like to thank all the ladies all around the world. Thank you for being part of judo. Stay in judo because it's one of the most wonderful sports in the world. Oh, thank you so much, Dawn. Dawn, you're just so, so lovely. And uh, that was such a nice, nice speech. Um, thank you. And now I'd like to ask okay. our last panellist, Anita Stapps from the Netherlands to see what she's been doing over the last 40 years. Welcome, Anita. Hi, everyone. Uh, all around the world, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, uh, whatever time it is there. And someone asked me, uh, um, did your life change after uh, the World Championships? Yes, it did. For me, there was um, a before and after, before 1980 and after 1980. And uh, not in the last place because my final was the first final. So I became the first female world champion. And um, at that time, I didn't realize how special that was. But when uh, I was on the scaffold and Rusty was crying her eyes out and me also then when they, they played uh, the national hymn, uh, uh, then I realized how special it really was for Rusty also because um, she uh, finally realized that that was what she wanted all along. I think that it was like that. But before 1980, before my world title, I was a very insecure young girl. Um, and um, I always thought I wasn't good enough. I wasn't strong enough. I wasn't pretty enough. I wasn't fast enough. I wasn't smart enough. And maybe at that time when I won uh, the world title, that was the first time what I remember that I thought, ah, now I'm good enough because I'm a world champion and better than a world champion isn't possible and how sad it is to to trust yourself and to have a, a normal self-confidence that's what i remember and i remember sitting uh in, in um before my hotel door and i was writing in my diary that same evening the 29th of november and i was writing in my diary i'm a world champion and now i'm good enough so yes there was before and there was after and what I did the last 40 years, I did a lot. Uh, first, I became a physical therapist, but then I realized that I wanted to, uh, to learn people how to take their own responsibility for their health and for their well-being. And uh, because of my own struggles with, uh, with my weight, I often lost seven kilos in five days before competition. Like in New York, I, I had to lose four kilos three days before competition. And uh, luckily, 
it was seven o'clock in the morning when there was a weighing and my first uh, uh, game was at one o'clock in the afternoon. So I had time to recover a bit, uh, but because of that uh, weight struggles and eating disorders, uh, the last 40 years, I helped women above 35 years, um, losing weight, uh, maintaining their health, maintaining a healthy weight, um, uh, by changing their nutritional habits. And I, I also had a gym, but because of knee and hip problems, I already have four new knee joints and hip joints. So I'm a, I'm a bionical woman now, but I can do a lot more than I, than I could the, the last 20 years. So um, I, I live my dream and that's helping other women uh, to lose weight um, at a healthy way. So, and I keep on doing that. So I never retire until I die. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Anita. Thank you very much, Anita. That's wonderful. And uh, I hope that your words motivate all the women out there to, to know that no matter what they are, they are good enough. We are good enough to do what, what we want to do. And uh, I love your I love your philosophy of working until you die. It's, it's very good. Thank you, everybody on the panel, for sharing um, a short bit about your lives and what you've done in the intervening 40 years. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go to a question and answering. So I'm going to hand you over to my colleagues, Nicola and Elisabetta, who are going to facilitate the question and answering. So everybody just enjoy, relax, ask each other questions, remember some memories from New York, and we'll have a fun evening. Nicola. Thank you, Lisa, and, and thank you to all of the ladies, wonderful ladies, and their inspirational uh, contribution. Uh, that was already amazing. I mean, I've, I've, I took some notes while, while you were talking, and I've heard that like, I finished to play judo, but they never stopped to love judo. Uh, I also, I mean, of course, we just heard that uh, our specialty, that, that event really was, and then until I die, I, I will never stop. We have heard... Um, I took my whole family to judo. So, I mean, there, there are a lot of inspirational moments and, and quotes that for sure we're going to reuse in the future as well. So, I mean, we're going to quote you for sure. Uh, just before we start to ask questions, if Matthias is ready, I'm going to ask him to maybe to launch the first video so we can see a little bit of action. So that would be nice. I don't know if Matthias is ready to, to show us our first... Has to hold that for 30 seconds. That's it. That's and she it. gets the Iman. Absolutely. Margarita looks good. She got it. There, there is a possibility. Paulette is a determined fighter. Paulette unseated the great Margaret Castro. That was a spectacular match in itself. Absolutely. Even if she doesn't get the 30 seconds here, she'll pick up some points. Absolutely. She got it. She got under 30 seconds. That's it. That's the pin. That's it. And the world champion in the 72 and over kilo class is Margarita Decal of Italy, a great international competitor. Margarita Decal has, as big as she is, that's how big her heart and personality is. She's a, a super woman, a super, super woman. So, Margarita, what do you think? I think it's a big emotion, but uh, the worst thing is uh, that uh, there is no Paulette here. This is also a moment we should remember everybody. That's why we choose some of these uh, nice videos for you. But I think what uh, Rusty was saying during the commentating that Margarita is a superwoman, it's true. <laughs> For my Thank own you. experience, it's true. So Thank you. I would, I would like you to tell us something more. I know that you love me because uh, uh, all 
the people don't know that Betta, it was one of my lovely baby. <laughs> she worked in my dojo for the period, in the period she studied Japanese and uh, he teach her to the little uh, children and she was a very good teacher. And uh, I think uh, yeah, it's a moment uh, a little difficult for me. Re I repeat, uh, for me, the, the worst thing is that there is not Paulette here. And, and I, I can tell you, because I had the, the chance uh, while we were preparing that celebration to interview Jocelyn Triadou and to interview also Marie-Paul Panza uh, from France, and they both also talked about Paulette and uh, how she would have loved to be here. But that's also why we are here is to, I mean, to remember those moments and to remember all those, also those who are not with us, uh, I mean, physically or mentally speaking, but they're, they are here in, uh, in our hearts. Mm. Mm. It's a, 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 a real, a really mm, emotional moment to this for me, because um, not for the first place, uh, for the person, uh, I meet her in the European Championship in the final. And uh, after I see her again uh, in the World Championship. So to time uh, the same person for a very important moment uh, in my judo life. Uh, and she, she was uh, in my heart. Uh, and after I know that uh, we are the same age, and so the same problem, uh, work, uh, live uh, in a family, and after, so it's a um, uh, particular things for us. Okay, I have nothing to say more. Mm. <laughs> That's already a lot, and thank you for the emotion, and thank you for once again yeah. remembering I mean, all those moments and all those were not necessarily with us today, but uh, they are still here somewhere. And uh, I'm sure they're watching us. But I think uh, that Rusty uh, see uh, in me a person like her. Because when she came in Venice, uh, she said that uh, she, um, she filmed me uh, like uh, a similar person. Uh, with the heart, not uh, with, with uh, the person, only the heart. So um, I think uh, we we see, we feel each other in the few moments uh, we we meet uh, during the competition. Uh, I think is uh, for is so. It's difficult to speak. <laughs> I prefer to speak in Italian if you want. Uh, there is. Oh. Yeah, uh, the problem. Okay. We have someone who can translate. Uh, Betta traduci? Sì. Ok. Sì. Dicevo che um, Rusty, quando ci siamo incontrati quei pochi minuti, è stato proprio un amore a prima vista. Ci siamo viste negli occhi e capite. Quindi when, non so perché è stato così. Quando they met with Rusty, they love each other at first glance. They immediately understood each other. Uh, Margarita said, I don't know why, but it was really like this. It was an immediate understanding, the two of them. <sighs> OK, that's all. <laughs> oh, you come back later. Yes. Oh, okay. Ti riprendiamo più tardi. <laughs> Um, we've heard also during the, the, the testimonies or what you, had, what you said, all of you before, that this competition had to happen if we wanted to go to the Olympics. Uh, um, maybe uh, Mary uh, Lewis from USA can a little bit develop that. Uh, why was it so important to have that first World Championships? Well, there, were, there are certain parameters that have to be met before any sport can be included in the Olympics. And um, the World Championships uh, was the last one of those 
things that we had to do in order to be considered. And because Rusty was who she was, we all knew that if we got that world championship and it was successful as a tournament, had enough, um, enough uh, countries participating in it and so forth, that Rusty would not allow women's judo to remain off the Olympic roster. We knew that she would get there in the end because as someone else has said, she never ever gave up once she put her mind to something, she went ahead and did whatever it was that she had set her mind to do. So if we had not had that first world championship, there are so many competitions um, that women have today that we would not have. And I have some friends who are still training and competing, much younger than me, of course, but they're still training and competing. And they have so many competitions, inter big international competitions that they can go to. And the funding was the other thing. We had no funding for women's judo at all. And part of the reason was because we were not an Olympic sport. So we had no funding that other Olympic teams would have gotten. And um, that's something that a lot of people may not realize for the US judo team, the women's team, we got pretty much nothing except what Rusty got for us. And she spent, I don't know how many hours upon hours calling and contacting and harassing more than likely uh, the heads of companies and getting sweats donated and money donated and warm up suits donated and trying to get us good deals on hotels. And just, I don't even know what else she did, but I know that many times we wore donated warmups because we couldn't afford to buy them ourselves. And um, the US judo organizations weren't helping us with any of that. And in fact, for the world championships, um, I don't know how many others remember, but um, we sat around in our hotel rooms the evening before the opening ceremonies. We sewed on those big round patches on the front and we sewed on our big, huge USA letters on the backs of our warmups that had been donated by the Sasan company um, for, for that event, along with some other items of clothing. But um, we sat there and sewed those on by hand so that we would have them on our sweats for the opening ceremonies. But I don't know what we would have done without Rusty. I really don't. So I, I think Again, we didn't maybe appreciate it at the time as much as we do now, looking back and realizing what she did for women's judo in general and for our team in particular at that competition. Thank you very much. We'll come back to that because that's an interesting question, how it was for also the other athletes at that time. I mean, mm -hmm. having to bring their own judo gear or own stuff and so on. We'll come back to that. But before we do that, we'll have a, a second a uh, small video that uh, Matthias will now show us. Okay. Anita, congratulations to you on becoming Thank the you. first women's world judo champion here. Thanks. I'm very glad to be it. I didn't expect it, but I hope so. So now my dream has come true. The young lady you beat had a very great international uh, yeah. reputation. Did you so think you could beat her? No, yeah, maybe. I, I don't, don't know, but I like to fight very hard, as hard as I can, and so I won. What about the coca that you got there? Oh, I don't remember anymore. It, it, just, it just happened so fast, <laughs> you don't yeah, remember. Yeah. They gave you a, a little bit of a stall at the end. Were you trying to wait and, and lash yeah, the match out? Yeah, huh? yeah I uh, remember. But it is uh, professional, I think, to, uh, to win time. What is your goal now, next for you? My what, sir? Your goal, what would you like to do next? What, ne what other championship would you like to win? Uh, the Dutch first, and then the Open German, the Open English. Maybe, I don't know if, if I win them, but I, I'll be there. If you get to the point of being in the Olympics, would you like to do that someday? Yeah, yeah I like it very much. Sure. Congratulations to you again. Thanks. Thank you very much. She did fine by herself. Ellie, maybe you want to ask a question, Ellie? So, Anita? Yeah. <laughs> what do you want? No, we know. 
I don't know. What do you want to know? You, tell, tell us what you feel. Oh, what I felt. I didn't realize it at that time, I think. And, and now I'm, I, I think that I didn't uh, enjoy enough that moment because I was still bedazzled a bit. I was 19 years old and uh, I was young and, and I didn't realize the, the impact of that world title, I think now. And what I felt was, um, yeah, how can you give words on that? So the, the, the weeks after I lived in a kind of dream and, uh, and it, took, it took a few months before I realized what I had done. I think that that's... How what? was your, uh, how was the reaction or, of your friends or your family when you went back then? Oh, my friends and family. My father, uh, it was the same night that there was a boxing game between, I think, Mohamed Ali and Joe Frazier in, in the US. Maybe you can, you can remember that. My father was, uh, was uh, up at night in, uh, in the Netherlands watching that game. And then I called him. It was evening in uh, New York and it was uh, uh, in the middle of the night in uh, Holland, in the Netherlands. And then I called him and I told him, oh, I'm, a, I'm a world champion. And he, what he said was, do you have to wake me up for that? So that was his <laughs> first reaction. And, uh, but he didn't know what he was saying at the time. But everyone was... Because um, no one uh, expected me to become a world champion because uh, originally I wasn't part of the Dutch equipe at that time. And at the very last moment, uh, uh, the Dutch uh, Judo Federation decided that I could come with. So it was a surprise for all, also for me. Can you tell us I a little bit? Sorry, to come back to, uh, to what Mary was saying before, that it was kind of a handmade championship. Uh, how was it for the Dutch team at that time? Uh, for the Dutch team, it was a big surprise. We were then, we were with uh, five girls uh, competing. And it, I think it was a very big surprise because nobody knew about the world championships uh, the only thing we did until then were the European uh, Championships. We didn't know um, uh, what girls we could uh, expect, what countries uh, uh, were participating. So it was all new for everyone. And uh, how was the... Because we know, we know that in Europe, Judo was already quite developed at the time. How was it from uh, the Pan American side? Like, Xiomara, can you tell us something about the experience from uh, Venezuela point of view, uh, or from your country point of view, or all these Pan America? Because I know you have all different stories. Xiomara? Hi. Well, it was, can I speak in Spanish, please? Do you want to make me um, translate later? Can okay. I? Yes. Bueno, if you speak la, slowly. Yes, I will speak slowly, don't worry. <laughs> okay, um, para mí fue un evento sumamente importante, el mundial, y La única experiencia previa a ese combate que fue para mí muy renombrado con Anita Stapp, la única experiencia que yo tuve anterior a eso fue la Copa, el abierto de Canadá. En ese torneo yo obtuve mi cupo para el Mundial, ocupé el segundo lugar. Y todo el equipo de Venezuela... Estaba, tenía poca experiencia, muy poca experiencia, porque teníamos apenas dos torneos donde habíamos participado, que era el primer Panamericano 
en Margarita y la Copa del Abierto de Canadá. Y por supuesto todas estábamos muy asustadas porque era el Mundial. Todavía no habíamos pasado por lo que era un Panamericano. Y todas, yo especialmente en mi peso, en la categoría 61 kilos, tuve mi segundo combate con Anita. Y me sentí, yo pensaba que de verdad podía obtener, lograr un campeonato mundial. Y luego de perder con ella fui a varios repechajes y obtuve un séptimo lugar en ese peso. Luego de eso comprendí que tenía que esforzar mucho más en la competencia y luego de ello obtuve mi título de campeona panamericana intervine en el abierto de Inglaterra y obtuve un segundo lugar entonces creo que me marcó muchísimo entender que mi nivel técnico le faltaba aún más y que tenía que esforzarme muchísimo más para lograr méritos que hicieran poner en alto mi país pero fue una experiencia inolvidable y el judo tachó mi vida después de ese mundial. As uh, you could hear, uh, the the experience was an uh, an amazing experience, and uh, they before the words, uh, I just competed in uh, in Canada. And then uh, I went to the to the words, and I had my first fight with Anita, and I realized at that moment that we had to our our technical uh, skills were uh, not enough, and that we had to to work much more to to get on the right on the right level and uh, to keep on going. And after this, because uh, the Venezuela team just had a couple of competitions on international level before this, uh, the, the, the Pan American Championship and uh, the, the Cup in Canada. And uh, after this, I, I kept on going and trained hard and I became a, a Pan American Champion. And I thanks, Xiomara, for this. Nicola? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, I have a question for Dawn now, Netherwood, uh, from Great Britain, because I mean, like yesterday when we had the rehearsal and a little bit before we started the, the, the live transmission today, I mean, she was laughing and interacting with uh, all the other, I mean, ladies here today. So how does it feel to meet, I mean, virtually meet, but still to be together uh, today after those 40 years? I don't know if Dawn is connected. Hello. I'm connected. Yeah. So um, yesterday we had a rehearsal and it was just really nice to be, to see everybody. Yeah. I've, after all these years, I've still kept in touch with a lot of people <clears throat> around the world, which is, uh, which is nice. Uh, and to reminisce about all the moments that we spent, probably we don't remember a lot of the, a lot of the uh, moments because like Anita said, we were in a, like a, a dream world, it wasn't true. But uh, when we actually won, you said, wow. I remember calling my mother and, and saying, uh, mom, I, I, I'm second in the world. And of, of, of all the world, I'm second, you know? So it was, uh, we didn't really realize that what we had done, but um, Rusty made a fantastic event. And I can always remember her coming over and putting her arm around us and saying, are you okay there? So that was was really nice. And as from this day, I think a lot all the all the girls that are here can really say that it opened uh, opened the eyes of the world judo to say that wow, those girls are good. So now, Rusty, she knew this, and uh, so she did everything so that we could uh, get into Olympic Games. And I'd just like to say thank you, all the Kanekogi family. For everything they did, uh, they made women's judo just where it is today, uh, with a lot of respect from all the world of judo. Because before it was men's judo and the women, oh well, they can do an, an event uh, later. But as as from the, this day, they really realized that 
women's judo could go somewhere. So the Olympic Games happened. And then step by step, the, the, the women's uh, participation in the Olympic Games for the women has just got better and better as it is today. But it was just, uh, I met some wonderful women and they're on this panel as from today and many, many more who are perhaps not here. Um, so people that we've lost, great judo people that we've lost, Paulette Foulier, uh, Barbara Klassen, and perhaps many others. But we just like to say that they're still with us and we're still with them. And uh, keep going, girls. And I'm just so happy and so proud to be part of this, um, this webinar, uh, which is just great. Thank you so much. Uh, Matthias, you can launch our third video. Palace of Italy wrapped up. Almost she has her wrapped up. <laughs> she, she has her Osaikomi, her hold down. Hold down is Yoko Shihogatami and 25 seconds with uh, well, get her. not that much there. left in the match. The no. match only has three seconds except, to go. Except that when the hold down time goes, that part of the match uh, remains continued. I see. So the match uh, is continuing now, and the seconds ticking away toward the, the full hold here, the full pin. There it is. <laughs> okay, let, let's not to comment too much that it was not exactly a Yoko Shogatame. Uh, but uh, Jane, uh, can you tell us a little bit, I mean, how do you feel watching those images right now? Um, well, I'm... I, there's most of these images I've never seen before, so it's really uh, great uh, to be able to see them. Um, and um, um, how do I feel about that? It, it's it's so long ago, you know. But um, uh, I, as you know, Nico, I had um, some paralysis of the of the. Yeah, face. You told me that during the interview. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, uh, I, I, it always brings back memories of this because it was, uh, it was pretty scary, you know, when I look at photos now. Um, the, the fight itself, I remember because, you know, at the time, um, depending on where you were in the, in the competition, the fight became longer and longer. You know, now all the fights were four minutes, but first rounds were like four minutes, then it was five minutes, then it was six minutes. So... Um, you know, the fights were going on and on. So that was quite uh, an ordeal at the time uh, also. Uh, also, the other thing was, I remember the referee, I'd been to Japan the year before. I'd, I was training four months in, in Japan in 1979. And uh, one of the coaches I was training with was the actual referee in, in the final, Takeuchi. So... Um, that was a quite a interesting experience also for me to meet him again in the in the finals and he told you that you had to hook your toes in the in the, in the tatami <laughs> he did <laughs> ellie i mean i don't know if you want to yes uh just about the videos uh, we have to thank jean and the kanokogi family to have kept all these videos for so long and to have given to us because uh, now we did, they were in Betamax, the TV, TV format before, and uh, they have been digitalized and they will be available for all of you in, uh, in the next days on our YouTube channel. I think this from Jean and her family and from Rusty because she organized to have the TV mm -hmm. at least the first day, it's almost all there. And, I and we can reveal I some secrets. We Thank can reveal you, some secrets because there was only one tape or two tapes actually for both days and so on. And then first we wanted, I mean, we wanted uh, Gene to send it over to Europe so we can work on it. And then we said, no, we don't take the risk because we don't want to lose those two tapes in the middle of the ocean, over the ocean. So actually it was done in the, in the United States. And maybe, I mean, Gene can tell us a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to share that. Well, you know, years ago, um, I, nobody knew that these tapes existed. Uh, we knew that there were tapes, but we didn't know where they were. 
So uh, not too long ago, uh, Carrie and I were cleaning out my dad's basement and just kind of just looking for stuff for, for the first Women's World Championships, some memorabilia. That's when I found a couple of the, the brochures. And uh, we were about to give up and uh, because the, the basement was just, we had enough, it was all day. And then Carrie had moved one box and she said, well, let me climb. There was like almost a crawl space and there was an unmarked box covered in dust. It didn't say anything. We opened it and we were like, oh my goodness, it's, it's like we found the pot of gold. So, uh, and from there we said, okay, we have to get them transferred. So I contacted Keith at USA Judo and, and uh, with Lisa and we figured out how to get them digitized and we wanted to hold this event just as a surprise. And it feels like this is a gift from Rusty 40 years later because we didn't even know where these were uh, until a few weeks ago. Thank, thank you. We know some of you ladies never had the chance to see yourself fighting or competing. And even pictures were quite rare at the time uh, if we compare to nowadays. So you will enjoy them all on our YouTube channel soon. And, and actually on our website, actually, I mean, you can say Lisa, yeah. because you were involved with that. I mean, uh, Lisa, uh, Elisabetta, sorry, created a, a full gallery, photo gallery of all the memorabilia and images and pictures that we gathered from all over the world. And I'm sure that we will keep, I mean, receiving images and and we will put them in, uh, in that gallery. Um, maybe uh, Ellie, you can explain how it works that we can also watch the, the, the competition sheets, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, you can join uh, the competition in uh, our results page. You will find the, you have the link in, uh, in the articles and you can see all the contest sheets because we up updated all the, all the results. We enter all the results and we enter the picture you, all the pictures you sent us, uh, tagging the names and so on. And we will keep on doing if anybody in, uh, in um, YouTube uh, or uh, watching us has different, different ones, uh, they can keep on sending to, to the IGF and it will be our real, real pleasure to, to share this gift to everybody. Because we are sure that what one person see, it's seen from one side, but all the others, they can find themselves in the picture and keep on collecting. So yeah. I think this is a, a very, very important moment for everybody. Uh, Monica, can you tell us how uh, you organized from Argentina? Because I know the Argentina side was also complicated. Yes, um, well, what I remember is, um, at least for, for me, we didn't have any international competition um, leading to the World Championship. I went to the uh, national championship and then qualified from there um, to be part of the, the team. But um, we didn't have, and listening to Mary, uh, it brought memories to, to me that we didn't have any support and um, we were qualified and they said, well, we're going to the world championship. Here is where it is. Well, now you need to get the money to go there. And so I remember uh, my dad, that is no longer with us, that he started knocking on every single door that he could find to fundraise because um, at that time, my brother was doing judo too. And there was um, a some kind of Pan American tournament in Mexico and um, a, a, a little bit before the World Championship. So my dad um, fundraised for this two tournament and just by knocking at people's door and saying, look, my kids qualified to this, uh, please uh, give me some money. <laughs> and so he did it, he did it all by himself. And then my, my dad and my brother that was 17 at the time went to um, the Mexico championship. And my mom, because um, that was the first time going out of the country and going to another place, um, then came with me to, the, to, the, to New York. So then um, my father and my brother just flew to New York and we um, joined there together. 
So um, it was it was very special, you know, um, for me thinking four years later, all that my dad did, you know, because um, he did it, and also you know all the people that um, hold a special place in my heart, like my sensei, that was the the one that coached me in the world championship um, that is still involved in judo. And I really visit nine degree belt um, in, in Argentina. Um, and his name is Miguel Angel Russo. Um, he, he coached me since I was five or six all the way to the world championship. So um, it, was, it was great. And actually we got, we got in touch you know, recently because of these um, events. And then we started talking again, you know. So this is um, this is incredible for me. I'm 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 very emotional at this time, really. And uh, sorry, <laughs> thank you, everyone. <laughs> That's it. Don't, don't be sorry. Be happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am. I am really happy. I am. And I'm old. That's why I'm crying. <laughs> No, but it really, you know, uh, thinking back, it opened the the door for a lot of people, you know, and and, and the message is from, um, you know, from Rusty that, you know, just she never quit, you know, because we all wanted to do stuff, you know, and I should have kept going and, you know, probably, I don't know, but um, she opened the door and because of her, you know, judo is what it is and women can do what they do right now, you know? So it's incredible. And we all, in one point or another, with a little part, we were part of it. So it's, it is, it is very special. It is very special. And I do hope to come back and, and keep giving, you know, to this sport and many of the sports too, because like I said, I'm a PE teacher in, this is just the tool to teach, you know, girls and ladies and, and, you know, just to do what you like and what you love and to keep going and to, you know, um, make a difference. So it, it's great. It's great. Thank you. Thank you so much for all your words and for your emotion. It's, uh, yeah. I mean, I know it's difficult, but it's also, I mean, nice in a way to, to see all that emotion that comes comes up I mean like after those 40 years and everything that that championship brought to the to the to you ladies but also to the world and to the to women's judo so it's really impressive we have um, we are coming close I mean to the end we still have a few minutes don't worry uh, but uh, we have a fourth video that we we want to play and to show you Three minutes left in this five-minute final. Hold down, hold down, good. It's an Edith's favor. Time going. It looks like Dawn is really locked in there. She's going to give one last attempt to escape from this hold down. It's all over. That's it. All over, and Edith Simone. A pin by Edith Simone of Austria. With two minutes and 51 seconds left. She pinned her opponent. Or so he did. Can you react a little bit? Because I mean, Austrian team was super strong in New York. So can can you tell us a little bit how was the the atmosphere between you and why you were so strong? <laughs> I must say, we as an Austrian team, we had it maybe a little bit easier because we had two very ambitious and enthusiastic and. Uh, yeah, uh, coaches who, who uh, helped to prepare us very well. And also we were a, a great team. Uh, we, we supported each other very well and we had a lot of uh, team trainings and, and smaller competitions before the, the world championships. And, and maybe we had it a little easier because really our coaches, uh, Mr. Rasa and Kreuphofer, they they organized almost everything for us. So we could concentrate on, on training. <laughs> but uh, yeah, 
one thing I want to say, if, if I'm allowed to, I read. You can say that, whatever uh, you want. That Don uh, became world championship, world champion a few years ago. And uh, I, I, it's, uh, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, <laughs> I think this is really great to do to, to judo on a competitive level in her 50s. And, and I really admire that. And, and um, I was very happy when, when I read that. And uh, yeah, for me, I must say there was a time when I, I was after my severe injury. And so I, I didn't even follow up on the judo competitions, but, but I, it, I couldn't keep that up. You know, I, I, I started to read and to, to look in Wikipedia, uh, what, what the others are doing. And, <laughs> and then, so I, I now I'm, I'm follow, following up again with great interest. And, and, and also there was a time when I, when I, uh, when I started to, to, Think uh, they didn't think so well about my fate. I got injured so bad, and and I thought, why did I do all that? But now, 40 years later, I told my my surroundings, my network of friends, and the people I work work with. Many of them didn't know I ever was in judo, and now I told them, and I got so many happy responses, and and people were happy about it, and and cheered, and and so now I, I know when, when people are happy about this so many years afterwards and the children look at the medals and so, then then it it, it made sense <laughs> the whole the whole uh, the struggle and uh, yeah it was worth it and it it actually it made sense and now it's olympic an olympic sport and it's great yeah. <laughs> but i really want to ask uh, don if how it's possible to compete and how to win a world championship in, in her 50s. <laughs> yeah. Don, what do you want to answer? How can I continue to do judo? Yes, I don't and, know. and be a champion after those years. Uh, well, in the, from the uh, world championships with uh, Edith, I was, I was in the 61 kilos normally. And uh, the Roy Iman, our coach, he moved all the players into different weight categories. So in the in the World Championships in New York, it wasn't my weight category. So I was like an underdog, and uh, I had uh, I was really quick because I was only 61 kilos, and now I moved to 66. So I was really quick on my feet, and so I had some really good fights, which didn't last very long. Thank you for the timing because uh, I didn't even know how long it took me to do the finals. Uh, in the semifinals, I was here with Christine Penick and she did a wacky get army on my arm, which uh, uh, broke the ligaments in my arm. So I had, a, um, I had a problem to use both of my arms, but the final with the Edith was, uh, was fantastic. Um, I got a coca and then she held me down. But I just like to say congratulations uh, after all these times. She was always one of the people who uh, was always meeting in the competitions. It was always very close, uh, the competition with Edith. But um, it, it, just to be part of the world judo uh, circuit is just great. After a few you know, number of years when I had my children and then I, I said, okay, I have to do something for my mind to make me feel good. And I want to um, show my children and show myself that I'm still living and I'm still can train as hard as, uh, as, I, uh, as I did before. So my mind is just on a good uh, circuit training, a good way of, of being, uh, have a good mind. And so I just got into the judo club and I said, Oh, no, no, I don't tell people that I'm here, but they did. So the worst part about it was I had like 50 people in front of me saying, I want to, I want to fight with her because uh, she's a champion already. I said, oh, my goodness. So in the end of the night, I said, no way am I coming back to judo. This is crazy. But two days later, I was crying on the mat. Two days later, I came back and I said, I'm going to be world champion again. <laughs> So I trained and trained and I came back and there we are. But, <laughs> but the life in judo with all the great friends, all the people I fought against on the mat, they're the, you, they, they, they're the people you have to beat off the mat. That's the great thing about judo is that we can 
go out together, we can drink together, we can have mm -hmm. f f f f f uh, nights out together and always be friends. And that's what's fantastic about judo. <laughs> we almost at the end, but you were talking about having fun, having parties with other ones. Can, can so someone of you tell us something funny that happened during that World Championship that, do, do, that you remember? We went to uh, one of the, a few of the English girls that were with us. They remember that we, uh, the World Championships, after the World Championships, we went into a, um, a toy store and there was a Christmas tree that was laughing and saying, what do you want for Christmas? What do you want for Christmas? So the, all the British team, they knew that there was a Christmas tree that was, uh, that was talking to us in the, in the, in the toy store. <laughs> and what did you ask to the Christmas tree? <laughs> I didn't ask anything because really I couldn't remember it. <laughs> it was the other girls that said to me, do you remember the Christmas tree laughing and asking for presents? <laughs> Ellie, uh... Jeannie, you want, Jeannie, you want to see the Christmas tree as well? Yes. Jane, Jane, Jane as well with the team. Oh, that was yesterday, Loretta I, telling I us was... about I was still looking for Frank Sinatra. <laughs> but um, Actually. I, during the, the video of my fight, um, I could hear, because my parents came to, to watch me, uh, which was a, you know, a big uh, adventure for them. We are, we are from a small town in the northwest of England and, uh, you know, very working class. So they came to New York. And I could hear my father um, um, encouraging me during this video. And uh, my father passed away a few years ago. So um, that's uh, very uh, emotional uh, for me to hear this. <laughs> we can understand that. Ellie, do you want to add something? Any questions? Or because we are coming to, uh, to the end? Uh, Jean. Can you uh, tell us something from your point of view then? Oh, you, gosh. You like a young, young girl involved into the organization. Yes, I, I, I was thrown headfirst into the organization of the First Woman's Worlds. And, and I would sit there trying to eat dinner or lunch or do my homework with my mother on the phone with uh, everybody all over the world, uh, whether she wants to file a lawsuit to get women's judo into the Olympics or uh, if she was recruiting some people to help. And then also uh, Peter Parazio was one of my mom's students and it, she, he was her left hand and, and she was a lefty because he sat there typing letters over and over and over nonstop. He, he was brains and support behind the operation. Uh, when Rusty said, I'm going to have this world championships in Madison Square Garden, uh, Peter asked, well, how? She said, we'll figure it out. So, you know, earlier, Mary had talked about uh, haunting everybody and, and annoying everybody and just being relentless to, to raise money for the women's team for the world championships. She made everybody buy a ticket to enter the stadium because she had a big bill and she had no idea how she was going to pay for it. Uh, I have to highlight she had support. Uh, especially in the in the 11th hour from uh, the IJF, from Dr. Matsumai, and uh, very quiet, very behind the scenes, he helped foot some of this bill for Madison Square Garden so that the doors wouldn't get closed. Uh, the, Rusty didn't sleep probably for about three weeks before the event. And uh, some of the stuff that happened behind the scenes, uh, for example, uh, certain deliveries were made across town to the wrong side of town. At that time, my father was teaching at the United States Merchant Marine Academy. So my mom asked one of the Marines to go get the delivery, but he never took a van. He just took a cart. So he went to lower Manhattan and ran about a mile through Manhattan with a cart full of goods to be delivered to Madison Square Garden in the rain. But, you know, you, you tell this guy to do something and he just loaded the cart and just ran across Manhattan. Uh, she there, so much behind the scenes, uh, broken, broken podiums where you would get up to go win, get your first, second and third place medals. Uh, she had somebody by hand constructing it. And uh, if the numbers were a little crooked because they were just painted or, or marked on by hand, 
pretty much this world championship was put together by volunteers and our dojo. So uh, like some of, some of the doctors uh, on site, Dr. Bowersax was one of her students and um, our, our club, Heidi, Mindy, Leslie, Peter, uh, just every, Gary, everybody put this together and donated their time. And there was no one task. You weren't, you weren't just given one task. You were given many tasks. My task was holding this, the sign for the US and uh, babysitting my brother and eating all of the M&Ms from our sponsor because there was no breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Uh, all they did was give M&Ms. I'm still going to the dentist because I fall, fell asleep with M&Ms in, in my mouth. So behind the scenes, Rusty put her heart and soul into this. And it was just such a magnificent event, but she embraced, and, and I have it in the book, uh, this memoir is actually told in her voice. So uh, if you read this you and you knew Rusty, you'll hear her voice in your head. I know it sounds a little weird, but it, it's true that everybody who participated, everybody who helped was part of paving the way for the future and part of being a pioneer and a trailblazer themselves because they don't they didn't have it like they did like they do now which it's still progressing but there are four or five or six people to a room we, could you imagine telling today's competitors to stay in a room with six of your teammates with two beds and figure it, and one bathroom and figure it out so each and every person involved in this was a trailblazer themselves so so many things happened behind the scenes um, I, I would probably spend all day telling you about it, but I can tell that Rusty loved and respected each and every one of you. And if you even were with her for a minute, it, you'll, you would remember. So thank you for remembering my mother. It's amazing to be with so many people who knew Rusty and had their own stories and, and some you could say in public and some you probably shouldn't, but uh, she, she thoroughly loved and embraced each and every one of you nationally and internationally. So thank you. Thank you so much, Jean, and, and thank you to all of you. Before I hand the floor to, to Lisa uh, for the conclusion, once again, thank you so much for all your contribution, all your interaction, all your answers, and your smiles, and your tears, and your emotion. That was really, really nice, I mean, to be together. Uh, Lisa will give some more information about what's going on also tomorrow. Uh, I want just to tell you that during the, the, the whole uh, webinar, we had some messages from Russia, from Senegal, from Spain, Azerbaijan, Great Britain, etc., etc. so many countries. Uh, also, uh, Marie-Paul Panza, who couldn't join, I mean, she sent me a message saying, say hello to everyone, dis bonjour à tout le monde, uh, in French she said that, so I mean, like, uh, yeah, we received a lot of messages and I think it was a great moment, so Lisa, now the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Nico, and that sadly brings us to the end of a fascinating seminar we, we thank all of the panelists for sharing your stories and for being a key part of the progressive women's judo and sport movement. This has been recorded and we will publish it on our YouTube channel so you'll be able to share it with all the people who were not able to join us this evening. We want to thank you all again. Thank you to our three wonderful translators who did a fantastic job. Thank you, Nico, Ellie, and Matthias for your work uh, in getting this session going. And uh, we look forward to seeing everybody tomorrow to join us at 11 o'clock Central European time when we have our second session. And our panelists will be Jean Kanakogi again, Loretta Doyle from Great Britain, Karen Kruger from Germany, uh, Jocelyn Triadu from France, Kerry Daniels from Australia, Christina Fiorentini from Italy, Ingrid Bergmans from Belgium, and Marjolaine Van Unen from the Netherlands. So we look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Thank you so much. Good day, good evening, good night, good afternoon, wherever you are. Thanks so much. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. We love you. <laughs> Bye, I love you Thank all. You. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Nico. Thanks, Ellie. Ladies. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. Great pleasure. Everybody. Thank you, everybody. Buenas noches. Uh, bonsoir. Bonsoir. Buenas noches. Ciao. 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 Toodaloo. Ta-ta. Ciao.
everybody, I'm Frank Lieber, and welcome to Madison Square Garden's Felt Forum for a truly historic event in women's sports, the first World Women's Judo Championship. 27 nations on hand competing in eight different weight classifications, and working with me is Rusty Katakogi herself, a former coach of the U.S. women's team and an organizer of this event, and I know this is a proud and happy moment for you. It certainly is, and we're very delighted to have you here cover our event, and it's a history being made, the beginning of the advanced movement towards the Olympics for women's judo. 